stopped along the way, you would have found out that you could have went a heat lot further if you'd have refueled your tank. That's Amen. the same way it is with going to church. Amen. If you'll take the time, God will give you the fuel you need. That's right. Yeah, you know, this is this is something that a lot of, of my buddies who, who don't go to church, I've heard them say it so many times. And every, it's just, I, I don't mean to be blunt, but it's just wrong. I mean, that's, that's the, the truth of it. How many Amen. times, we live in a very rural area, right? So how many times have you heard somebody say, well, I get, my church is out there in a deer stand by myself in, in, in nature. My, mine's, you know, sitting out there by myself in God's creation with a fishing pole in my hand. Right? That, yeah. that's, a, that's all well and good. Enjoying and, and identifying and understanding and realizing that everything is created by God's hand is a, a admirable thing to do. But that's that's not the same as worshiping in a group. You don't get the same connection. You don't feed off of each other. There's no edification in that. Amen. Amen. I can't t- I, I can't tell you how many times I've heard that, Herschel, because I'm the preacher. You know, I, I can't I can't do that. You know? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's no edification. No. There's I mean, no. Ed- I, I'm sorry. Go, go ahead. ahead. No, you go I'm ahead, bro. I was going to say, there's no edification and stagnation. That's, That's right. right. Uh, mm-hmm. It's just, you can't, how, how can you build off of the Spirit of God the way that you should if you're by yourself in one with God when you could be with your brothers and sisters in, in Christ where the Spirit of God moves freely? And he's edifying this one. He's teaching this one, these things in the Word of God. He's teaching these, these things in the Word of God. And that's how we grow. We gain strength from one another. I mean, think about it the same way. It's like an army, where if you take an army and you put one man out there, he's only good for one, for, for that one, one particular thing. But if you put hundreds of people out there, you gained a whole lot more ground. That's right. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, just for the record, we all have been missing Joel. Was it just me, or did the whole church not get a blessing just because Joel and Ann was back this past Sunday? Am I wrong on that? I felt it if nobody else did. No, that's truth. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I think we might have lost preacher. No, I'm here. I'm here. Oh, okay, sorry. Well, I'm gonna um, I'm gonna move on to the next one. And I'll be honest, when I was going through and, and finding these things and, and learning and, and and just being guided through what what is what should be said. This is by far the one that I rely the most on. This is the most beneficial thing to me from being in a family that is a church. And for the record, I'm just going to throw this out here, and I don't mean to glorify our specific church, but I feel like that is one thing that our church does really well. It doesn't matter if the people in our church, matter of fact, I'll use myself. The first time I went in church, I'm sorry about this preacher. Uh, the first time we <laughs> went in the church, I came to that church. I came by myself. I'll tell you why I came by myself that day. is because the Bible says, that the the man is the spiritual leader of his family. And I'm being honest, I wanted to make sure that I was going to a church that was full whole and wholeheartedly in the Word of God and not trying to make a better you. Um, but <laughs> that that's why. Right? <laughs> but when I walked in through the doors, one of the very first things that happened is this, this scraggly fella they call a preacher walks up and gives me a big hug. And uh, he said, hey, man, I'm glad you came. And, you know, I, I didn't, I'd be honest, didn't want to be rude. I did think it was a little weird. I ain't going to lie. I even mentioned it to Bill. I'm like, man, it, I don't know about no really grown man hugging me, right? Yep. But the fact of the matter is I wouldn't have no issues hugging my brother or my dad. That's right. right? They're a part of my family. And now, that, like I said, I only, I only bring that up to say I think our church does a really good job at that. But on to the point, this one to me is – 
the the number one thing I find myself leaning on in our church family. And I think it should be this way across the board. And that is we find accountability. The church provides a practical way for account to, to get accountability. Our relation as relationships grow and friendships form, there is someone to encourage you and also rebuke you when necessary and rejoice with you when necessary. Proverbs twenty seven seventeen says, Iron sharpens iron, so man mm. sharpeneth the countenance of his friend. Mm. Accountability is crucial. It's important in the battle to overcome sin. And the church family is one of the best places to find somebody who will pray with you, who will talk to you, who you can confide in, who will teach you, who will correct you. It's, it's, it's the, the best example that I can think of to find all those things. Yeah. I agree. Anybody got, well, I'm, I got one more, but anybody want to say, talk on that one? Yeah. yeah, let me share a piece of my testimony. Just a piece. I ain't going to give you the long-winded version. Yes, after, a, after I lost my daughter, yeah. I was extremely hurt. But the, the thing that most people don't realize, I was just as angry with my daughter as I was hurt by her actions. I was, a, a large part of me was furious. I, when, after, after her funeral, when I decided I'm going back to church, I can't, I can't tell any, anybody here why I went to church that first Sunday after her funeral. I have, I, I can't tell you now, um, but it was an overwhelming push. And I know now it was God. I, I know who it was, but I walked through the church doors that morning with a very negative attitude, extremely negative attitude. Um, I waited for somebody to feel sorry for me. I, I want nobody's pity. Yada, yada, yada. All right. On the other hand, I waited to hear some little whisper. The only reason Bill's here is because his daughter just passed away. I waited for those things. When I left that Sunday morning, I got neither one of those. What I got was people who did let me know that they shared in my hurt. And they, if there's anything they can do to help me, to let them know. It was all positive and uplifting. All right. I, I can't even remember what Wayne preached on that day because I sat over there by myself and I argued and I argued and I argued with God the whole time I sat there for about three months, all the way into the first of, of the next year. All right. Well, after now, five years in looking back, I, I can see exactly what God did. He allowed me to be angry. He allowed me to sit over there and argue with him. He allowed me to do whatever I needed to do because he said everything he had to say to me through Joel Wood, Jacob Martin, Ray Martin, Wayne Martin. And I can look back and see that now. That's what a church family does. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Any, anybody else? I'll move on. Yeah, if, he, if I can interject for just a half a second. Yeah, go for it. All right. Uh, and it's and it's on the point that we made earlier that that it, it's kind of interesting to me how everything circles back around because we're talking about Jesus and, and Jesus is unchanging. Um, but last week we were talking about having a, a, a private prayer area because prayer isn't a show. And what I would interject is maybe that you tell your friends who say, "Well, I don't go to church because my church is, you know, found on a on a fishing boat, or my church is found in." you know, my deer stand or whatever, I would tell them, I'd be like, you know, maybe that'd be a perfect prayer closet for you, but that ain't church. And, right. then, and then explain to them exactly what we've been talking about tonight, because guys, I'll be honest, it's probably been four years since I stepped in the foot, stepped foot in the door of an actual church. I can't remember the last time I did that. But here's the thing that I found, and this is just through my own spiritual walk, is that God, like I said before, has never left or abandoned me. There may be eight, nine, ten of us tonight, but this to me is my church. 
because I live in New York City. <laughs> it's sure. it's it's just different up here, you know. And and so to be able to to get once a week or twice a week with some people who truly love Jesus, to me, this is my church. Right now, I'm laying with my daughter while she's sleeping. But this is my church. Amen. You know, because because this is what I have. This is what God has has gifted me with for now, and that's okay with me. You know, so so it's not necessarily even a bad idea to maybe have that as a prayer closet, to maybe go camping, you know, once a week or whatever, and have that be your prayer time. But you're absolutely right to to neglect the fellowship of believers is neglecting the spirit of Christ. Amen. And um, Amen. you know, maybe maybe that's some self conviction coming in. Maybe this is God's way of showing me, like, hey, even in New York City, I'm there, buddy. You just got to go. You know, where where it might be easier to find in in South Georgia, or it might be easier to find in Florida, or wherever it is I've lived before here. He's like, maybe it ain't as easy. Maybe the uh, the the society you live in isn't geared towards. Hey, we go to church on Sundays and Sunday nights and Wednesdays and things, but I'm still here for you, bud. That's you right. know, and and there will be a season, and it brings hope into my life, man, because there will be a season, a time, I'm sure, in the very near future, hopefully, where I'll find that church company, I'll find that group. But for right now, I'm just blessed to have you guys. Amen. You know, I'm blessed to finally have a group of men in my life who say, listen, we're no better than you, but we love you anyway. We know you're imperfect, and guess what? We love you anyway. You know, and, 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 and to be encouraged to follow after the heart of Christ, that is life-changing, for sure. So, sorry, I went on a rabbit hunt, but we can go no, back that's to fun. it. That's fine. That's <laughs> fine. That, I'm gonna was, move on. Oh, go ahead. Sorry. That uh, that was beautiful. Put it there, Daniel. Oh, I mean, wow, man. I, oh, man, you just made me speechless, man. Uh, you know, it's it's very common in nowadays that the very first thing that people will tend to tell you if you try to invite them to church, a lot of times. Is what I found that people will say, I don't want to go to church because it's full of hypocrites. Mm-hmm. Well, I just want people to know that as soon as we make that statement, if we make it, we are just as hypocritical as those so called hypocrites that we speak of in the church. Mm-hmm. And we need to really know, you know, and, you know, so, and then some people tend to turn around and fall back on the, well, there's wolves in sheep's clothing. Yes, there is. But Judas walked with Jesus, and we never seen Jesus ever once cast him away. So Jesus you, even you, told you him he was going to do it. That in due time, Jesus is going to reveal those. And at the same time, you still can't just ultimately cast them away. You have to fall back and pray for them. That's what, that's what being the church is about, is 